In this video, I'm going to help you decide whether you should go for static site generators or for WordPress. Hello, I'm your host Casino from Casino.com. I'm the Digital Alchemist. Now, the answer to this question is going to be different whether you are a web designer, a web developer, or maybe you're just someone that has a website ID, a business ID, you want to build it online, and you want to know which tool to use to build it. So make sure you watch till the end if you want to know what specifically applies to you. And as the title says, it's static site generators versus WordPress. But it could also be versus dynamic website because at the end of the day, that's what a WordPress website is. But hold on, what are static and dynamic websites? So first of all, let's talk about static websites. So here you see Hugo, which is a static site generator, but this is their website. So I guess they built it with their own platform. And basically that, that's a static page. So what happens is that each image you see on this page, like the logo here, the image here, basically what happens is that in the code, when you load the page, there's an instruction to just load the images right away. And this is the code you get. Now, don't click off, don't leave the video if you're not a coder at this point. I'm just explaining to you what's going on. So basically, each and every time an image is loading, it's just here in the code. Like you see here, images. As you can see, the code is asking for that image. As simple as that. And the same goes for scripts uh, and the script like JavaScript that's going to help to um, show a few, I don't know, animation, a few features on that page. So that was my totally incorrect definition of a static website, but I'm trying to make it simple here. Uh, otherwise, there's always Wikipedia, but basically this is what happens. Just code and you load the assets. Now, when it comes to dynamic websites, it's different because the data is stored in a database. So basically what happened when I loaded this page that you see on screen, instead of just loading the assets, it actually goes an extra step, actually a few extra steps because when I load this page, the browser is going to ask to the server, can you query the database? Can you ask the database to serve me that image? Chelsea. Okay, then it comes back. Then, okay, can you ask the server to uh, load that image from Sadio Mane? Okay, then it comes back and so on. Now, you can actually use cache plugins and some other techniques to make this more like a static website. But at its core, that's what it is. So if we look at the code, it looks just like static code. But basically what happened is that this code was created after all the back and forth with the server. Now, like I just mentioned, cache plugins solve that. And if you use a content delivery network, it goes even faster. But still, from time to time, there's going to be this endless back and forth with the server. And for the many websites that don't use cache plugins, this is a constant thing. Now let's talk about the pros and the cons of static site generators. So let me show you a few ones, but of course there are many more and some of them are actually in between both worlds, but we have Hugo here, then you have Nuxt, Jekyll, Jekyll, uh, Publi, if you know that one, Gatsby, uh, Next, 11T. So what are the pros of using static site generators? Well, first of all, because it's not using a database and permissions, when I say permissions, it's like the administrator, then editors, and the usual roles that you find in a content management system like WordPress, because static websites do not use that, it's harder actually to hack the website. Now, it's always possible to hack any website, but in terms of security, it's gonna be easier to manage that kind of website if it was well built in the beginning. And next, it's usually way faster because there isn't that constant back and forth thing with the server. And also there aren't as many plugins that you need to add and that add bloat to your system. Next, the consequence to that is that it requires less resources on the server. So that could actually mean that for the same web hosting plan, you could have more traffic and less stress on the server. Another pro is that with static websites, you can do anything you want. So basically, sky is the limit, if you are a developer, of course. And let me insist on that. Okay, that was for the pros, but now let's talk about the cons. Well, first of all, it takes way longer to develop, unless, of course, you code as fast as you talk. And some people actually do, but the most people is gonna take way longer to code a simple website with a few features as compared to WordPress. Now, of course, if it's just a bare bones website with no design whatsoever, no feature, then it might actually be faster. But we're talking about 
a real world scenario where you need to deliver a website, a professional website, most of the time it's going to take way longer with those static site generators. Next, it may feel like reinventing the wheel sometimes. So for example, let's say that you want a simple feature, I don't know, like an event calendar, and in WordPress you would have a plugin for that, but now you're building a static website. And unfortunately, the system or the platform you're using doesn't have that kind of plugin, so you need to develop it from scratch. Now, of course, you could find scripts on the web and try to tweak it, but you get the idea. Next, because it's longer, it's gonna cost a lot more. Unless, of course, it's a very simple website, but if it's a more complex website, that's going to take more time. And also, if you're stuck at some point, you may need to hire an additional developer. And finally, the barrier to entry is higher. So if you're not a developer, then that may mean that either you just go and learn to become a developer to create your project. But unless you have really nothing to do and you get loads of time, but most people, that's not going to be an option. Now, it could also be that you want to become a developer, so then it makes sense. But for most people, the barrier to entry is going to be way too high. Okay, so now let's talk about WordPress. So first of all, let's talk about the pros. So the first pro is that WordPress is free. Now there is a commercial version, but that's WordPress.com and I'm talking about WordPress.org that you can install for free. Now, some static site generators are also free or they have a freemium uh, model, but not all of them. And if you want the nice features, you're going to have to pay for it. Now, when it comes to WordPress, it's totally free, but with a caveat, because if you want to go professional with WordPress, you would need some external tools. Now, they also have a freemium model. So all in all, it's kind of the same, except that the core of WordPress is free. Now, like I said, you can use WordPress professionally and I often recommend to have an ecosystem because there are many, many tools and the ecosystem I recommend is Elementor. There's a free version and a pro version. So basically, that's going to be a page builder. It's really drag and drop. That's going to be really easy for you to build a website. And if you want to go the extra mile, you can get the pro version. And I've talked about it in another video, which I will link in the description. And I strongly, strongly encourage you to go and watch that video. Next, you need a WordPress theme and you can use the free Astra theme, which is a great, great WordPress theme. And just like for Elementor, they have a pro version. And guess what? I got another video for that, which I will link in the description below. And to complete the ecosystem, you would need some add-ons for features like really complex e-commerce websites and much, much more. And there are many, many add-ons, but to me, the most complete suite of plugins is the CrocoBlock suite. Now, of course, for all of these, you will find all the links in the description below. These are affiliate links, so it means that I do get a commission if you purchase after clicking on my links. But I only recommend those tools because I absolutely love those tools and I use it in my day-to-day. -day. And the commissions I get actually support this channel and allow me to keep on creating free content just for you. Now, the next advantage for WordPress is that it's way faster to implement. So, for example, a website that would take you like, I don't know, three to four days in WordPress could actually uh, take you like weeks if you had to code it by hand and code each and every feature. Next, WordPress is popular. So it's like one third of the websites in the world. So that means it's easier to find free tutorials, it's easier to find answers, and it's easier to find professionals that are going to be cheaper because there are a lot on the market. And also because WordPress is so popular, there's a saying that says that there is a plugin for everything. So if you ask for a feature, there's a plugin for it. And finally, all of that means that it's gonna be cheaper to produce high quality websites. Now, what about the cons? Well, first of all, plugins. If you want to create complex websites, you will need many, many plugins, and that cannot blow to your system. And also, if you want to do WordPress professionally, you will need to get premium plugins. So that means yearly licenses. I always try to go for the lifetime ones, but for some of them, there's no lifetime. So that's cost that keep adding up. So what was free in the beginning is not so free at the end of the day. Next, more plugins mean more maintenance costs. Let's say you have 10 plugins. It's going to be different if you have 50 plugins. And I know we always try to get the minimum number of plugins, but sometimes it's just not possible. And that brings me to my next con, which is the security. Because let's say you have 50 plugins because it's a really complex website. So it's actually 50 opportunities to get hacked. Because if one of those plugins has a security issue, then that's one more open door. So if you have 50, you constantly have to monitor. And finally, 
WordPress websites tend to be slower if they're not well optimized. And even when they're well optimized, it's hard to beat a static website when it comes to speed. Now, like I said, if you know what you're doing, you can reduce the gap. So which one should you use? Well, like I said at the beginning of this video, it really depends on who you are and what you're trying to achieve. So if you are a developer and you know how to code and to you coding is just like breathing, uh, it's so easy, then by all means, go with the static site generator and add your own code and do your magic. Next, if you're a web developer, but you actually need to work faster, maybe because you don't have the time for that project or maybe because your client doesn't have the budget, so that means less time, then I would go with WordPress. This way you can work way faster for high quality websites. You won't have to reinvent the wheel and then you can still add your magic to create custom hooks, custom code, custom features that you can just add to the core of WordPress. Now, if you are a graphic designer, a web designer, or just someone that had an idea to create a business online or you had a website idea and you've never built a website, you wanna know which tool to use I would definitely go with WordPress. Like I said, you find so many resources, tutorials, and free plugins to get started. Although I always recommend when you can to go with professional plugins where you can have support because that's gonna help you tremendously, especially if it's a business project. So I hope that you now have a better idea of whether you should use a static site generator or WordPress. And if you enjoyed this video, please like it because it really, really helps growing the channel. And if you want more help on your digital journey, make sure you subscribe and smash the notification bell so that you don't miss anything. Oh, and by the way, a website without branding is nothing. So if you want a killer branding for yourself or for your clients, I created a web identity guidelines template that you can download on my website for free. Initially, it was created for Affinity Designer, but you can use it with Adobe Illustrator with a workaround. So if you're interested, just go to casino.com forward slash branding. So that's it for this video. Make sure you don't miss the next one. And in the meantime, don't forget to invest in your success.